Hello everyone and welcome back to our fourth and final video for the female reproductive cycle or the end of our series here. We've gone through this journey with period cramps, ovulation, and even fertilization and now we're going to wrap it up into this nice little package because it's nice to review everything and put it together and finalize it. And as a little bit of a bonus, we'll go over some differences in hormone levels in men versus women. To do this, we have a whole bunch of charts that we're going to use on the whiteboard. So, to the whiteboard. So welcome to the whiteboard session. This was really helpful for me as a student to see all of the charts side by side or on top of each other to kind of wrap my head around this whole female reproductive cycle because there's a lot of things going on simultaneously. Now, one thing that all the charts have in common is day one to 28. So all of them are going on with that 28 day cycle that we've been talking about. The top chart is going over changes in endometrial thickness. The other one's going over follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and their varying levels throughout the 28 days. Same with estrogen and progesterone, their levels throughout the 28 days. So let's start with changes in endometrial thickness. You can see at the beginning on the first three to five days, you're gonna have the decrease or the thinning out of the endometrium. That's associated with essentially menstruation, the bleeding, the period cramps, all the not so fun stuff that women get to deal with. And that was initiated by what happened in the previous cycle. So the previous cycle, if an egg is not fertilized, estrogen and progesterone levels go down, which essentially kind of stimulates this next step of luteinizing and follicle stimulating hormone have a little boost right there that you can see. And that's what essentially initiates this first part of the next cycle. Let's clear out the endometrium of the uterus and start over again. Now, what else is happening with this? Down through here, this initial boost, remember, caused those primordial follicles, those most immature follicles, caused a handful of them, we mentioned six to 12, to become primary follicles. And during that phase, those primary follicles start secreting estrogen, and the estrogen levels spike up. Now, the estrogen levels, as we mentioned before, are gonna cause the uterus to start building back up again, which is really important for potential implantation of a fertilized egg. Earlier I did mention there was something else that estrogen could be involved in, and estrogen levels spiking also are involved with increased libido or increased sex drive. Would probably make a little bit of sense for a woman to have a little bit of an increased libido or sex drive right before ovulation, you know? So maybe, you know, she might overlook that her mate might be less attractive or that, you know, during that time he might actually look more attractive. He might have forgot to do the dishes or mow the lawn. And normally she wouldn't overlook that stuff. But because of this surge of estrogen, that other stuff's not as important because there's this egg inside screaming, I need to be fertilized. Let's move on. So. Coming back to our wonderful chart here, we had that spike in estrogen. We have those primary follicles developing, but remember, we don't want six to 12 babies. So only one of them typically actually matures fully, and that becomes the dominant follicle that moves to the edge of the ovary and awaits for that big spike of luteinizing hormone. That luteinizing hormone causes the follicle to rupture, the egg moves out of the ovary, and causes the next phase, which is the second half was the luteal phase, if you remember. Now that big spike of luteinizing hormone converted the follicle that ruptured out the over, I'm sorry, ruptured out the egg to become the corpus luteum. That corpus luteum is now still inside the ovary, was the follicle, became the corpus luteum, and it is now secreting high amounts of progesterone. Yes, secretes some more estrogen, but a real big spike in progesterone, which again, just starts to build up the inside lining of the uterus for potential implantation. So hopefully that kind of puts everything together for you in a nice little package. There's one other thing I just wanted to mention over here. There's a lot of spikes in hormones that women have to deal with on a 28 day cycle. And so I wanted to kind of do this comparison of men versus women. Often you hear like testosterone versus estrogen. Those are pretty comparable like hormones when you're comparing the genders. And so one of the interesting thing is that we'll do this with men. This is a little bit of a different chart, zero, 12, 50. These are, these are gonna be in years. 
and I got years down here. So let's use testosterone in men for an example. Essentially from zero to 12, there's hardly any testosterone, virtually none. And you have this and then at age 12, puberty. And then the testosterone levels tend to peak and, and then, but then they really start to taper down later in life and death. Okay, so pretty steady over the time. Yes, it does fluctuate throughout the day per se, but it's not this, we're not getting this huge, huge spike throughout say a monthly cycle. Now with women, we compare estrogen. We have zero to 12 here, about from that time, there's hardly much at all. There's hardly any at all. And then we go to puberty and then we do this. I'm not finished. A little more menopause, death. Sorry, death was a little bit morbid, but quite the comparison if you think about it. And I don't do this, you know, necessarily to poke fun or anything like that. This is very serious science stuff, of course. We would never port, poke fun at that stuff, but this should give us a little bit of empathy for all the hormone fluctuations that women have to go through. And it's all in the name of reproduction. Thanks for watching, you guys. We really appreciate your support. Please subscribe, ring the bell so you know when we go live so you can get your anatomical questions answered during our weekly live sessions that we're gonna be starting again next week. We have some really cool affiliates. If you guys like anatomical artwork, we have a, an affiliate called Codex Anatomicus. They'll give you guys a discount. If you like any of their artwork that you wanna purchase, we'll put the link down below. We have a new affiliate that does anatomical models that I am following with my hand here. Really great for teachers, students who wanna have models at hand when they're actually learning their anatomy. Comment below, ask us questions, tell us what you thought about the video. And if you decide to produce a baby, please do so safely, consensually, and romantically.